Welcome to Cypress Community College Baseball and Chargers Live here on SportsNetUSA.net and Chargers Live. Ed, Albert, myself, hey, we're double dipping. It's Saddleback at Cypress. Of course, last week we were over at Saddleback and Albert, we saw Saddleback take away an exciting 5-4 to four victory against the Cypress team. Absolutely, that was a really great game to be at if you weren't there this past Tuesday. So Saddleback takes the first game of the series against Cypress, and Cypress now looking to kind of even things up in the series between these two teams. And of course, with the Chargers now being on their home field, back with their home wind advantage, Mark, I think we can expect the ball to fly a little bit more here today than you would have seen out of Saddleback. Yeah, the Albert Robles Vortex is howling right now. We did the over-under. The number got set at two and a half. One of us was around three to four. The other one was at five. Put them together, there could be nine today, Albert, to set the page. Absolutely, and of course we would never officially bet on baseball, but this, these are just, you know, our little guesses. Yeah, that's right. Castelli is starting it off. Tanaka will follow with Allen. Those will be the first three up for Saddleback. Saddleback in the hunt when you look at what the standings are right now. Hunter Drake on the mound for your Cypress Chargers. Last start for Hunter Drake came against OCC where he gave up, where he put up five innings of work, gave up four hits, three runs, three of them earned, allowed four walks, struck out three and gave up two home runs but earned the win against OCC. Castelli batting 338 this season. Drive that to deep right field. And uh, you know what? Maybe we ought to up our number, right? As that one just soars out of the stadium. It's one to nothing Saddleback to start things off. Absolutely, just cleared the sign where it says NCAA Division I All-Americans to come out of Cyprus. And Castelli gets things going on the second pitch of the game, just crushes one over that right field wall. So that's going to bring up Tanaka, who's got a 34-game hitting streak. That's right. For the entire season, he has got a hit in every game He's played in, and he's played in the entire season for Saddleback. Started the last game off against Cypress, getting a hit in the first inning to continue his hitting streak. When he went, you look at Tanaka, got a single, then he popped out, then he walked, and then he had a sacrifice. A yeah, talented player behind the plate in Tanaka. Takes that high and away. We'll set the defense for you for Cyprus in a second. So Jack Burke watched that one just soar out here in the first inning. Tanaka fouls that off. So our over under was four or five, depending who you're sitting next to here on the scorer's table. Uh, at this rate, we're hoping for the wind to start blowing in. <laughs> As Cyprus, the ball flies out of here. If you're a fan of long ball, it's the place to come. Find a way. Or at least if you're a Chargers fan, you're hoping that every time the Bobcats come up, the wind just sort of dies down a little bit. Hunter Drake looks at it. Flags are flying. So Tanaka gets on with a walk. First two people up, first two people on base. J.C. Allen playing third base for Saddleback. Allen was 0 for 3 on Tuesday when these two teams met against Cypress. And one of the few players who didn't do any damage in that really fun game. J.C. batting 343 this season. Come on. 
and some of these players will be looked at at the next level. Keep your eye on Tanaka. He's one of the top stealers in the OEC. He's got 11 stolen bases. Well, he's been caught stealing twice. So he's in the top four in the OEC. Fouled away. And of course, when you talk about home runs, right now it's Schmidt at Fullerton with 12. That means J.C. Allen is right behind him with 11 for home runs. So Allen's number two in the OEC for home runs hit this year. Allen, he says what, number two? Oh yeah, I like being Two for two, uh, you know what? Maybe the number nine was a better number that we should have taken for home runs. So Allen now is tied for the league in home runs in the OEC. And it's quickly three to nothing here in the top of the first. Well, Albert Robles, you had four, there's already two. <laughs> I think, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say the ball is juiced and maybe I can slow the game down a little. You really should have been playing prices right rules in terms of uh, close without going over. I tell you. And you know, Robecki, he, he was running back as soon as J.C. Allen made contact on that. Maybe only ran back about five feet before he was, you know, made aware that, you know, it's not coming down where you can actually catch it. All you can do is just really look at it and admire it with envy. Bouchane is now up for Saddleback. Bouchane went uh, two for three against Cyprus. Had a big double. There's gonna be a conversation on the mound already. Playing left field for the Bobcats of Saddleback. So you look at the standings right now, Golden West, 11 and five over at, and uh, 24 and 11 overall. Santa Ana, nine and seven. Saddleback, nine and seven. Fullerton, nine and seven. If the playoffs were today, those four would all get into the playoffs because it's a tie for second place. You take the top three, but all those teams are large amounts over 500. So the OEC would probably end up getting four teams in at least right now. And her Drake comes up high on that one. So it probably wouldn't make Northern California happy to know OEC's got four teams in there. Then you look at Riverside, who's only one game behind. Orange Coast is one game behind. So if Riverside were to go and Bouchane walks. So the first four up all get to first base safely. Home run, walk, home run, walk. Hmm, there's a theme to this first inning. So Bar Junior Barajas comes up. Junior said, well, I've got to keep the memo going. Walk, home run, walk, home run, walk. Junior went two for four in the last game. Struck out his first two times up. Then finally got on the gravy train. Hit a double and a single after that. Good catcher for the Saddleback team. Runner at first. No outs. Popped up 
Down the left field line, out of play. Yeah, right into the visiting bullpen. Three runs on two hits to start this game off. Shonsby at first, Jackal at second, Chapman at short, De La Rosa at third, Robecki in left, Robert Pitts Jr. in center, and Jack Burke in right. That's the defense for your Cypress Chargers. Down in the dirt. Hunter Drake is on the mound, and Trent Johnson is behind the plate. Shot a ball, hits the ground. They turn it, get both of them. So a nice little deke there over by Jackal. It's a soft line drive that gets hits to them. He flips it to Chapman. Chapman throws back to Ryan Shonsby. A four to five to three double play. Four to six to three. Four second, six short, back to first. So a four to six to three double play gets two down. Brings up Hoyer playing right field for Saddleback. Fouls it off down the left field line. Bryson Hoyer, batting 254. Bryson went to Paso Robles High School. He was one for four, but he did have an RBI and a fly ball late in the game that helped Saddleback really make sure they could win. That was in the eighth inning. Hoyer got that one on a sacrifice fly. It was deep to center, enough to get the runner home. Fouls that off. Boy, I tell you what, they're swinging hot bats for Saddleback. You look at these two teams. Saddleback is a team batting 298. Cypress batting 333. Just down and away. Two and two's the count. The Bobcats in the chase. Well, you'd expect that from a Bobcat anyway. Take it in the dirt again. And if the ball is sailing the way it is, well, get ready when Cypress comes up. Goes in the dirt, gets away from Johnson. Player just trots down to first base. So another walk, third walk to the first inning for the Cypress pitching staff. Jake Tyler comes up now. Jake, the designated hitter in this game today. Jake hits one out to right field. Jack Burke this time just settles it underneath it for out number three. But not before Saddleback says, hey, let's make it exciting. Let us score three runs, three runs on two home runs, one left on base, and no errors. At the end of a half an inning of play, it's the Bobcats three, your Cypress Chargers coming up to bat. Starting things off will be Burke, Robecki, Shonsby, and then De La Rosa. When you come up and when you look at that, Jack Burke batting 3 
41. Evan Roll Bickey, 397, was hitting 400. He was hitting 401 before they went to Saddleback the other day on that. Then you've got the big lefty right there. Oh, hey, let's go down a few numbers. Batting 363 and then in the hole, the third base person now batting 403. Albert, when you look at those first four that's coming up, the worst hitter is batting 341 in those first four that are coming up. And you talk home runs, you go four for Evan, four for Albert, 11 for Jack, and seven for Ryan. 26 home runs combined in those first four hitters. So we'll see what happens today. I, of course, I figured it out. When you look at the starting lineup for Cyprus, 58% of the starting lineup for Cyprus will hit a home run in today's game. Uh, it's it's an absolutely dangerous one through four here for the Cyprus Chargers. And of course, you know, Jack Burke, lady things off, was named uh, Charger of the Week for weeks April 8th through the 14th. Pretty much named so for his uh, feats against OCC, where in game one, he went two for three with two home runs, put up five RBIs, one for four with an RBI in game two, crushes one down the left field line, foul. And in game three, went three for five with an RBI. So a total of seven RBIs across those three games versus the Pirates of OCC. So well-deserved player of the week for the Chargers. Jack, trying to start things off. Zachary Allegro is on the mound. He leads the OEC in saves. Starting pitcher for Saddleback. He's got six saves this season, so he's number one in the conference with saves at six. We'll set the defense in a second for the Bobcats. High and away. Two and two's the count. The last time that Allegro started was versus Golden West College. Went two and two thirds, allowed four hits, four runs, all four of them earned. Gave up two walks, three strikeouts, no home runs. Down in the dirt. You look at Jack Burke, 23 walks this season. Leads the team in striking out with 35. Takes that deep and foul. Just started the game, three to nothing. Yeah, the ball is sort of uh, traveling today. Winds blowing straight out. Jack stays alive, reaches for one. I like Jack. I think Jack's an excellent baseball player. He plays great right field. He's got all the tools to play the game. Smart baseball player when you watch him play. Ball four. Boy, they thought they had it called. Everybody thought they had it called for Saddleback. And the home plate umpires already said, okay, guys, quit your complaining. So that, Jack is over at first. And that is just a testament to the plate discipline of Jack Burke, as of course you stated how many walks this kid has. And he just shows you how good his eye is to, to stay off that ball, just off the side of the plate to get on base. Evan Robecki comes up, takes the first one for a strike. He was batting 401 earlier this week when he played Saddleback. Now at three, a paltry 397. Poor guy. On base percentage, 442. Down and away. Slugging percentage, 596. And you look at what Evan can do. One triple, 14 doubles, and four home runs. He's got 34 ribbies this season. He hits the ball. Jack gets back, and when I say he hits the ball, he's only struck out 
10 times this season, and he's only walked nine. This is a hitter in the number two spot for your Cypress Chargers. And you, know, you listen just how often this kid struck or ice, how infrequent Robecki strikes out. Only had 10 strikeouts this season. And of course, easily one of the few strikeouts for this Chargers team, considering how many at-bats he has on the season, which is just all the more impressive. J.C. Allen lays out flat, makes a stop on the play, and gets Robecki at first. And it came down to a great defensive play by Allen to get the out. On the play, Burke moves to second. No opportunity for a double play on that last play. Shonsby comes up. Foul ball. So we'll see what Ryan can do. He sort of hit that off the edge of his toes, limping around just a little. Ryan's hitting 363, a slugging percentage of 613. Seven home runs, 10 doubles this season. He leads the team in RBIs with 42. So he's the punch bowl maker. Fly ball. Down the right field line, it's gone. Well, we said he was the punch bowl maker and he just did that. Is in the first inning here, we've now had three home runs and that is now home run number eight for him. And it's now three to two. Shonsby really is such an impressive player out there. He absolutely got all of that one. And with the way this wind is actually swirling around here on this field, I'm surprised it didn't hook foul. Just had his timing just right to keep it in play. So that brings up De La Rosa, who is the leading hitter right now for this team. Albert's batting 403. Another one who likes to hit the ball. Doesn't like to walk, doesn't strike out much. Off the plate, one and one's the count. You look at Albert right now, he's been at bat 129 times. He's got 52 hits for the season, 38 ribbies, and a 403 batting average. Off the plate, ball two. So that's right, it's three to two, and it's long ball day here at Cypress College. Albert puts an easy fly ball, sun reflecting against the glasses, and that's made out there by Bryson Hoyer for out number two. So a player we haven't seen in a while, Luke Matlock comes up. Luke's out of Cypress High School, right down the street. Down and away. Luke batting 400 this season. 23 hits in 90 at bats for Luke. And Luke hits it solid and drops in for a base hit. So Robert Pitts Jr., that's right, wearing number five today. He wore number 23 at Saddleback. It was that thing that, you know, when you go to work and you realize you didn't grab your shirt, you're there bare-chested. Well, that's what he did. So they gave him a jersey, and he was number 23. As Matlock stands over at first, two down. 
Robert takes that down the middle first strike. Betting 330 this season, 18 RBIs. Again, another person that can hit the long ball. Seven doubles, two triples, three home runs. Fouls it off. Three to two here in the first inning. Defense back deep for Saddleback. They're realizing the ball really sails. High and tight. Up around the chin, he turns his shoulders, but it's a check swing. Fortunate for Pitts, he wins the appeal down at first. Bouchane swinging over towards center field out and left. So if you can get it down the line, everybody's running for a while. Hits it right where Bouchane is. He comes in a couple steps and makes the catch. But not before a couple runs come in. Two runs on two hits, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to the top of the second, it's Saddleback 3, Cypress 2, here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Well, it's one of those things now in the OEC, and I'm sure people are going to look at all the different conferences that are going on right now, trying to figure out where everybody sits. And like we said, Golden West 11 and 5, Santa Ana 9 and 7, Saddleback 9 and 7, Fullerton 9 and 7. Yeah, that's right. It sounds like I'm having a problem remembering things. Riverside 8 and 8, Orange Coast 8 and 8 and then your Cypress Chargers at six and 10. The thing that's interesting, Cypress is 20, 14, and one overall. Golden West is sitting there at 24 and 11. Cypress overall is playing with everybody else up on the leaderboard. It's those conference games that if they catch college or traveling to Saddleback, the close ones they've lost and Albert, all they needed were a couple more they were sitting at eight and eight right now. Anybody could make the playoffs. Absolutely, yeah. Like, like there are several games that they've played that we, of course, have witnessed where it's just like, dang, if if they maybe didn't make a few changes here, make a few changes there, might have come away with a victory in some of those, you know, critical games that we've covered here on SportsUSA.net and Chargers Live. Jacob Hudson, first base person. Saw Jacob play last Tuesday for Saddleback. Flares it out to right field. That's going to drop for a base hit. So that is going to bring up Andrew Nikoluk, the shortstop for the Bobcats. Nikolic, somebody else that when we talk about contributions, really didn't have the type of game that he wanted. He struck out a couple times, flew out to center. His last game against the Cypress Chargers. Betting 337 this season. Free swinger. He has struck out 23 times this year. Walked nine. He's got 14 RBIs. And really hasn't shown power. Squares the bunt. Drops the bunt down. They're going to let it roll foul. And of course, we saw one of the craziest plays last Tuesday here on SportsNetUSA.net where they were trying to drop a bunt down. It got came inside. They first ruled that it hit the batter. But everybody was confused, so a run comes in and scores. 
the, as we get ready for the pitch, I'll end my story in a second. Drops a bunt straight back, turn, looks at second, throws to first for the out. So sacrifice works. So the umpire in the infield says hits the batter. The other infield umpire now gets into the discussion, goes to the home plate umpire and says, no, it didn't hit him. So therefore the run counts, because that's what I saw. They all had a conference, realized this was the, when you look at it, a one run game, it was the play of the game that the umpires once again got involved in and caused an outcome. We saw it replayed many times. It did hit the batter. Absolutely, like, like anybody who knows any sort of you know basic physics, when a ball hits at a certain angle, its trajectory is gonna go a certain way. Like, like it's not gonna hit a point and then keep going the exact same direction that it was originally heading. Ball gets away from Johnson on the pitch. Hudson moves over, and that's one thing we've seen smart base running by people in both these games. Ball gets away from the catcher, goes to his left or right. They're taking the advance base. Hudson now standing over third with one out. Once again, down in the dirt. Castelli, well, he said, you know what? I heard there was a vortex over here. Uh, does it go to right field? He found it his first time up. Hit a long home run to right. Rolls that left hand over a little too much. Two and two's the count. Three, two here in the second. Hudson gets on with a single, gets sacrificed to second, and then on a pass ball. Nice little play at second base right there by Nathan Jackal, who comes up, holds the runner over at third, and goes to first for the second out in the inning. Two down, Tanaka comes up. Yeah, 20, let's see, 34 in a row? Got to look at that and be impressed. And quite frankly, if it doesn't impress you, you don't know baseball. You know, I tell you what, thank goodness we're not the official scorekeepers because if it's close, you don't want me calling the play. <laughs> On the inside for a strike. Nice pitch by Hunter. Hunter, six foot one, 190 pounds, out of Huntington Beach High School. Kata fouls it off. So Cypress trying to strand Hudson over a third, trailing by one. Hunter Drake looking for that elusive strikeout here in the top of the second. There he gets it. So no runs on no hits. No errors and one left on base. As we head the bottom of two, well, it's the Bobcats, three. Your Cypress Chargers, two, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Albert, Ed, the old guy, happy to bring you all these games here on Sportsnet, USA.net. And, of course, we were talking about people. De La Rosa is now leading the OEC in hitting. Who's he followed by? Evan Robecki, who's number two at 397. Oh, wait a minute. Who's behind that? Well, Tanaka, who just struck out. Well, let's throw in one more charger in the top four in hitting. 
Sconsby is sitting there at number four in the OEC when you look at what's going on. So like we've said, if you've been a Charger fan this year, they are a prolific offensive team. They can score runs, they can get up against you. It's been like when I talked to the coaches today, I said, do you, do you feel like there's just that bad little poison pill that jumps up every once in a while? I got the polite answer, hey, it's baseball. You know, so nobody from Cyprus this season is making any excuses, and that just says a lot more about these players and this coaching staff here at Cyprus College. Jackal's going to lead things off. Nathan. Batting 378. Nathan lines a nice sweet one to left field. So the offense again is swinging a pretty bat when you talk about it. Trent Johnson comes up. Freshman catcher, not many at bats this season. See if Trent tries to move him along. Trent lets one fly in the gap and left. Oh, the weight of the wall, that ball just kept traveling. And the left fielder goes down and that's Jacob Bouchain that ran into the wall in left field when he tracked that down. Now he goes back in position. Albert, that's just that ball just carried and carried and carried in left field. And fortunately enough, like, like it stayed enough in play for Bouchain to make the catch right at the wall. Just catched it right at the top of the fence, right at that yellow. Went right into the fence, and you know, like I, you walked the fence along me as we've gone out there to set up our cameras, Mark, you know that it's it's not padded out there. Like, it's just straight chain link. The Chapman comes up, swings at the first pitch, hits it to Nicolette, flips it over to Castelli, then to Hudson for a 6-4-3 to four to three double play. No runs. One hit. No errors, and nobody left on base. Well, we've played two. It's been an exciting two innings. It's Saddleback 3, Cypress 2, here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet USA.net. Make sure you check the homepage at Sportsnet USA.net so you can find out what upcoming games are going to be played. They're always listed well in advance. And you look at, you know, we talk about the amount of home runs in a season. What's the record? Well, Craig Kuzmik in 1997 still holds the record. He had 17 for the season, followed by Jeff Tuttle, who had 16 in 2002, 16 in 2001. And since then, nobody has been close to going even further into all those records when you look at home runs in one season. So that's who's sitting there. You look at the guys right now, home runs sitting there right now. Burke's got 11. He'd be the only one really chasing that record book. He needs to get hot. He could if he could get a couple. He could get in the top nine in home runs for a season. The top nine would be 13 for Cypress College. J.C. Allen, start off the third. J.C. decided to say, you know what? I hear the ball flies well here. Swings through that one. He hit a home run his first time up. Let's go, 
big turnout today again. A good turnout by the families. JC said, well, you know what? Let's have a magic wand. I don't think that one's going to hit my bat. A little outside and down in the dirt, it goes for it. 0-2. Oh O2 pitch. Just trying to protect the plate. Tentative swings this time for JC. So JC still at 0 and 2. Fouls that back towards us. Pretty sunny day here at Cypress College. Started off overcast, cold and windy. It's gotten warmer. The wind has not gone away. O2 pitch. Off the plate, one and two. For those watching the game, yellow and red is the color of the upper garments for Saddleback. Down and away. And they're not jerseys. So they are the red t-shirts and then they're jerseys with no sleeves. So be very much like a basketball jersey. Yeah, kind of going with the, like that Colorado Rocky cutoff that, yeah. they, that they occasionally wear. Down in the dirt. Three and two. Bouchane on deck. Walked his first time up. Right over to Albert. Throw to third from third. Get the out. So he has just played so much better since he's moved from short to third base. Yeah, you know, I, I really think that you know the distance between going from short to third has really improved his timing and his accuracy. Yeah, he's got good range as a third base person. Shane comes up, walked his first time up. Hits it over to right field. Jack Burke just glides in and picks that off for out number two. Jack is a smooth right fielder. Rodrigo Brajas is up now. He grounded out to a four to six three double play his first time up. So Hunter Drake has settled down now for your Cypress Chargers. Everything looked like out of kilter in that first inning. Topsy Turvy. A shamizzle and a shamazzle. down by the shoe tops for a ball. Two knows the count. For a strike, two and one. Down in the dirt. Three and one. Ball four. 
so Barajas gets on with a walk. And that brings up Bryson Hoyer. Bryson walked his first time up. Nice block behind the plate by Trent Johnson. Ball goes down the dirt. Trent gets his body in front of it. Make sure there's no advancement by the runner. So Hunter moving smoothly. Easy ground ball over it short. Short little throw, but Darren Chapman gets it there. And it's drug out by Ryan for out number three. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to bottom of three. It's Saddleback three, Cypress two. Here on Sportsnet, USA.net, and Chargers Live. I was looking at some of the things for most triples in a year. Surprisingly, the record is still for a season six. And I thought, oh, wait a minute, somebody ought to catch that. Uh, not this season for this team. Doubles, it's 29. And that's not going to happen either. So, batting average, 438. That's a possibility to go and catch, but if you can get up there at 400, around 409, you've got an opportunity. James Jackie with a minimum of 100 at-bats, that's what they would base it on. Slugging percentage, Albert Robles. The record is 820 hmm. for a slugging percentage for Cypress College. That's, that's just, that's crazy as far as I'm concerned. RBI is first season, 71. Runs scored, 72. Hits, 95 is that. So, thought there might be some opportunities to chase records, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen this year for the Chargers or on SportsNetUSA.net and or Chargers Live. Tyler Burns on the mound, so a pitching change for Saddleback. Here in the third, Burns comes into the game for Saddleback. So we've got a new pitcher on the mound for the Bobcats. Quick change. It's 11th appearance by Burns. He started 10 games this season for the Bobcats. Jack Burke up. Walked his first time up. Jack Burke's got a slugging percentage of 7.06. 32 ribbies this season. 11 home runs, leads the team in home runs. Jack got enough giddy up that if he gets in play, don't think he's gonna stop at first. He'll turn and keep going. Three to two. Just off the plate. Saddleback says we got him. Cypress says no, not yet. Two and two is the count. Jack goes after one high and outside, swings through it for strike number three. First strikeout 
today for Cypress. And that brings up Evan Robecki. Evan, four home runs, 14 doubles. Looks at that in the dirt. Nine walks, 10 strikeouts. He's been up 141 times. He's been up more than anybody else for this Cypress team. It's 56 hits. More than anybody else on the team. Leads the team in doubles. And there's a cluster of people at mid 30s and RBIs. Evan. Hits a chopper. This is going to be a tough play over at first. Beautiful pickup, but Evan outruns it. Once again, this kid can do everything. And Nicoluk. Bare hands it, picks it up. Nice play by Nicoluk, it's short, but can't get Robecki. And I tell you what, Albert Robles, that's a smart shortstop. Knew if he caught it with the glove, there was no chance. Bare hand it's just short. Absolutely, and to have that presence of mind to even make the bare hand and have that skill is impressive enough. And to even make that throw, despite not getting me out, is still something to, uh, to take away as a positive. So Evan with a hit, one for two today. Sean's B says, well, you know what? The wind's blowing out. Oh, wait a minute. That's what I did the first time up. He had a home run in the first inning. That's how the two runs are on base. Two runs scored. Down the middle. On to the count. Bats left-handed, plays defense right-handed. See what Ryan can do with this one. 0-2 count, throw over to first, not in time. Nice dig over there by Jacob Hudson. Ball went right into the runner. Evan leaning just a little. Ryan flares it off. Burns, gotta keep an eye on Evan Robecki over at first. Four stolen bases, hasn't been caught stealing yet this season. See if they'll send him. Down low, pretty looking pitch, wow. Give me a little bread and butter, throw that jelly on top. I tell you what, I take that one, that was sweet. One and two. Flip back, Evan easily back to first base. Still waiting to see if they'll let him go. Oh, high fastball, a lot of heat, and it's Ryan swings right through it for out number two. Couple strikeouts now. One thing that I kind of find interesting, Mark, looking at some of the information for Tyler Burns, in his last game that he pitched, was in the very game against Golden West that Zachary Allegro started. And you had mentioned earlier that Allegro, you know, led the Bobcats with six saves. So to me, it appears that the Bobcats are kind of going with an opening situation, going with a hard reliever to start the game, then going with a starter for your long relief. Could be. Could be. I mean, a couple back-to-back -back strikeouts here. And in that game against Golden West, you know, Allegro went two and a third. Burns went six and a third. So De La Rosa looks at that one. Like we said, leading hitter right now. 
for this Cypress team at 4.03. Fly out to right his first time up. Hits it into the gap, right field. Tracking it down on a nice running catch is Tanaka, who just had his eyes on it all the way. Well, no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Well, Albert and I thought it was going to be a food fest with home runs, but I guess not. It's Saddleback 3, Cypress 2, here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet, USA.net. Tyler, Hudson, Nikoluk will start things off here in the top of the fourth. They're up by one, and they are fighting for their life. There is a bunch loaded up in the middle of the OEC, and depending on how it goes, realize for the playoffs, Ed Ford's looked at it. I've looked at it. Your first three from every conference are guaranteed to make the playoffs. One, two, three, get to go. If three is not over 500, there's not a guarantee that they get to go. If they're over 500, there is a guarantee they get to go. We've looked at it. Some of us have thought there's six openings. Some of us have thought there's three openings. Whatever you look at, it's skinny. It's like a size 27 waist. Corey Nalen, I know those days are long not by, but Corey, there's not much room for anybody to crawl into the baseball playoffs. And if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it now here on sportsnetusa.net and Chargers Live. And of course, you know, for Cypress, these next four games, including this one, are absolutely critical for the actual Chargers. Because after today, they got three more games in the OEC, all of them against Riverside. And Riverside, of course, is eight and eight currently in the OEC. So if Cypress can, you know, come away with a victory here and hopefully come away with three more wins against Riverside, depending on how other games go with Santa Ana and Saddleback and Fullerton, Cypress could somehow magically find, the, find their way into that top three that you were talking about, Mark. Well, I tell you what, I watched Jake Tyler lay down a bunt. I thought it was gonna be a base hit. And yet we've talked about the young man playing third base now for Cypress, who has changed since he's with shortstop. Albert comes in flying there, makes the play to make the out over at first base on a sweet defensive play for Cypress College. And Albert's absolutely right. We'll see what happens here in the playoffs because it, it could be real interesting. It, there could be some teams that get left out, Albert, that everybody's gonna think they deserve to be there. And that's gonna be true, but there's only so much room at the table. It's like when we go up to Nevada, Las Vegas with Dale Jernigan, when Dale sits down, there's only so much room at the table. Always thinking about Dale, very good friend of Mr. Nealon's, and I know Dale, friend of mine, fantastic young man. Hudson comes up now, playing first base. For Saddleback. So Gray started at first base on Tuesday. Then Jacob Hudson, Hudson came into the game. It's nice to have two first base people. Robert Gray can play over there and Jacob Hudson can play over there. Jacob gets a walk. Nicola comes up. Made a nice defensive try. In the bottom of the third. 
Tried to get Evan Robecki, barehanded the hit towards this thing, threw off balance, couldn't get him, but it still was an excellent defensive play. Nikolic sacrificed his first time up. 0 for 3 on Tuesday. Betting 337, 23 strikeouts, nine walks. So he's a free swinger for the Bobcats. Down in the dirt. And I bet you would think if you knew that, I mean, you should look at, to me, you should look at those stats. If somebody's a free swinger, throw them something they can maybe hit. Don't give him that free pass. There's a strike on the edge. Two and one's the count. And when it comes to dealing with a free swinger, there's really no need to be tricky. All you really have to do is just give him something that's tempting. Exactly. Right on the edge again. Two and two's the count. Throw over to first. Close over there. Nice play. And of course, when we talk about the young man at first base for Cyprus, lefty has the natural sweep to the bag. Right hander, about two inches behind him. Fouled back here. And that two inches can be either a pickoff or an attempt, just because you've got to take that extra time. Nicolette waggles the bat. Hits it. Robert Pitts Jr. just says, that's an easy one. Glides underneath it, brings it home, throws it back in the infield for out number two. Castelli comes up. He started things off. The lefty turned on it. Albert and I looked and said, our over-under is messed up. But you know what, since then? I, I did say over-under was two and a half. Originally you did, yeah. And, and then I made an actual guess. <laughs> well, it looked like it was going to be a lot more when this game started. So basically, I'm right, but I'm also wrong. But mostly right. Well, all depends who's watching or listening. Yeah, you know, audiences are fickled. You know, you're a fan of sports. Yeah. You've been an audience member. Absolutely. Look at the opponents and go, oh, that was. If you listen to one of the broadcasters I don't really like, that's uh, a local broadcaster here, everything his team does is great, even if it hasn't happened for a week and a half. So. Freezes. Castelli at the plate. Nice pitch. I could be like I could be like him. You know, three weeks ago this kid got a base hit. He looked great three weeks ago. And you know, a little bit of credit there to Hunter Drake, not afraid to throw a curveball there right down the middle. Right there on the edge, strike two. Back to back sweet ones by Drake. One and two. Two outs. Runner at first. Up by one, Bobcats hoping for more. <coughs> Tries to overthrow that one. Bobcats, nine and seven, 21 and 13 overall. Come on, Come on. Let's go, baby. Let's go, 
Goes foul, out of play. Summer McCartney, the head coach for the Bobcats. And you gotta appreciate any coach that when he walks over, which we saw today, and it wasn't it wasn't Summer, but it was one of his coaches walks over and has this great face of hair. Some of us up here that really appreciate that. Popped up over by the dugout, and they run out of room. Of course, if you've ever been to a Charger softball game or baseball game or basketball game or water polo match, or volleyball, or men's or women's soccer. Uh, you might see why I make that statement. Castelli, making it tough, two and two. Fly ball, Jack backs up, underneath it and pulls it in. Burke having absolutely no problems with that one. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to bottom of four, it's the Bobcats three, the Chargers two, here on Sportsnet, USA.net, and Chargers Live. Albert, you watch these two teams, and, and you know, you and I have been out here for a lot of these games, so I, I'm just going to say it to you and see how you take it. I know nobody agrees with me, but I sort of feel like this Charger baseball team has been playing in hard luck. They don't get that break that gets them on a roll, and then they put seven games up there and in the playoffs. I mean, I know I'm a fan of Chargers. I've been out here, and I, I support the school like I do Fuller to College. But that's the way I view these baseball games. You being a baseball fan, I don't know if you see it the same way. I think I would agree a little bit there because, you know, like these Chargers definitely produce offensively. You know, they're one of the best hitting teams in the OEC, if not all of Southern California for JUCO baseball here. But clearly their struggles have been on the defensive ends, particularly when it comes to their pitching staff. Like you think, oh, Cypress is taking control. Like they put up six runs here, five runs there. Like this game, locked up. And then we go to the bullpen. And then whoever they're playing, like whether it be like, you know, the Pirates or Golden West, what have you, next thing you know, we're in a one run game when they were up by 10. Like that is where Cypress has really felt the, you know, the blunt end of, you know, difficult games is their pitching. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes you, you know, you have to look at what happens. We've seen dr some dramatic victories too here. Matlock comes up. Look at Matlock. Good defense. Luke Matlock. Fouls the back our way. Of course, Brad Pickler's team chasing again. Fullerton College unbeatable this year. In the top spot in the OEC. But if you go to RPI, Cyprus is number one in the state. Just off the plate. Of course, everybody knows my feeling about RPI, so, you know, and Corey Nalens and Ed Fords. Matlock swings through that one. Strike three called. Strikeout number three for the Chargers here today. Pitts up now lined out to left in his first at bat, back in the first. Robert Pitts Jr. Come on, 
Robert takes it in the left field. Base hit for Robert. So Corey Nealon was saying, when you look at it, outside of the top three from each conference, we've got Fullerton College, Riverside City College, San Diego Mason, and Allen Hancock that are outside, but possibly could be playoff team. The voice of Cypress basketball and volleyball here on SportsNetUSA.net and Chargers Live. It's men's and women's basketball. Runner goes. Makes it safely into second base. So Pitts gets a great jump, gets over there. Throw looked like it could beat him, but throw takes a little hop, but he does get a stolen base on that one. So Robert puts himself now in scoring position. That's his first stolen base of the season. He's been caught twice. I find it a little shocking that he only, that that's his first stolen base with the speed that he has. Down low. Still trailing by one here in the fourth inning. Three to two Saddleback. Off the plate for a ball. Of course, I bring up basketball. If you ever have the chance to watch community college basketball, take a look at it. Some very talented players out there. And if Corey's calling the game, well, the best in community college basketball, calling the game of basketball, Corey Nalen here on SportsNetUSA.net. So the runner advances. I believe they had just called a pitch clock violation. They did, yep. So the pitcher didn't get it off in time. Therefore, you count that as a walk because it's given a ball because of a violation on the clock for the pitch count. And that allows the runner to be awarded first base because it's ball four. So Trent Johnson comes up. Trent flew to left his last time up. I think that's the first violation we've seen this season. Yeah, and next year they're supposed to establish clocks on the field for everybody. I can tell you right now, Kelsey Fulton has their clock ready to go. I was at their game last night. Throw to second, not in time. Castelli. Moves over, tries to get the runner. Hudson at first, Castelli at second. Nicoluk at short, Allen at third. That's the infield for Saddleback. Fouled away. Bouchane in left, Tanaka in center, Hoyer in right, that's the outfield. Barajas behind the plate. That is the defense for the Saddleback Bobcats. Trent fouls it off. 0-2 oh, is the count. Chapman on deck. Chapman his first time out. Grounded out in a double play. Trent's just looking, Pitts dances. No, no way, no way. Holds up, doesn't offer. Little waggle of the bat. Umpire doesn't flinch, 
Gives him the ball. Down and away. Could finally put the ball up on the scoreboard. I, Albert, there was a second there I was going, wait a minute, that ball didn't get fouled. What, what's going on here? It absolutely was. And, and I did notice from the umpire, like when he put up the count for the pitcher, he made sure he made a nice little flamboyant gesture with, with the ball hand. Hey, hey, put it up. Yeah, follow. There's an old guy calling the game over there. Don't confuse him. Two and two's the count. Runner at second, tying run. They turn, throw back. Robert gets back to the base easily. Somebody's getting a call. It's not me, it's not Corey, it's not Ed, it's not Albert. Down in the dirt. So a nice at bat, really nice at bat by Trent Johnson. It's been selective this time up, looking good at the plate. Three, two count, taking his time. Strike three called. Of course, we saw the replay right there. That pitch was right there for a strike. Johnson just looked at it. Couldn't do anything about it. Brings up Darren Chapman playing shortstop. For your Chargers, Chapman looks at a strike. So it looked like it might be a slugfest. That's how this game started. Home runs galore in the first inning. Now it's settled down into that everyday baseball game where, hey, whoever makes a mistake could go away a loser. Chapman offers. Nice thought, because when you look at it, Hudson's playing deep at first. Allen off the bag at third. Yeah, he's like a good 15 feet off of third base. Force the pitcher to make the defensive play and see if he can play defense. On the inside for a strike. Keller Burns, very smooth on the mound for the Bobcats, looking good out there. Like Albert said, it looks like Saddleback flipped what you would normally do. Start a reliever, then bring in the starter. Fouled away. One and two. They've been keeping an eye on Robert Pitts Jr. over at second base. Darren, out of Temecula Valley High School. Swings through that strike three. So, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to top of five, it's Saddleback three, Cypress two, here on Sportsnet, USA.net and Chargers Live. Albert, Ed, and the old guy, happy to bring you these games on a beautiful Thursday afternoon. It started off bleak, cold, ugly, windy, and then all of a sudden it said, you know what, it's time for baseball, so let's uh, make things good, and it started that way. You look at Coach Hutting, who's entering his eighth season here at the head coach for the Chargers. He's got an overall record of 171 wins, 97 losses, and one tie. A winning percentage of 
38. You know, when he came here in 2017, he had 87 student athletes transfer to four here universities here. So this is not only a baseball coach, but this is an educator, which seems to always get lost in the transition of athletics. Everybody keeps thinking none of these people are educators. I don't, I don't get that one. Hudding also sent eight players to the professional ranks so far being here. So he's done everything asked of him. Graduated from Cal State Fullerton. Yeah, I had to say that, guys. That's where he went and earned his master's degree from Azusa Pacific in 2015. Okay, Corey Nalen, your college gets a little more love again here on Sportsnet, USA.net. We go to the top of the fifth. It's Saddleback 3, Cypress 2 on Sportsnet, USA.net, and Chargers Live. And here in the fifth, it'll be Tanaka, Ellen, and Bouchain for Saddleback. Tanaka still looking for a knock and to increase his hitting streak. Walked his first time up, struck out his second time up, waved at something that wasn't close. High and tight. Batting 393. 20 walks, 25 strikeouts. And of course, when you see he's got 11 steals, well, you know that's how he gets the hits. If he puts it on the ground, he'll try and beat you running down there. Three and one's the count. Three one count. Hunter takes his time, brings it home. Tanaka fouls it off. Tanaka's got three home runs this season. One triple, but 13 doubles. So he utilizes his speed that he has when he gets out there. Takes that up the middle, drop, throw to first. They get the, so nice play by Chapman who has it hit to him, drops the baseball, doesn't panic, and still gets Tanaka. Brings up C.J. Allen, J.C. Allen. J.C. Had a home run his first time up. And then grounded to third, so he's one for two today. So he's one for five in the last two games, pops it up. Jackal hauls that one in for out number two. So when you look at what's going on there, I tell you what, Albert, you've got to look at Hunter Drake right now. He's pitching an impressive game. He's absolutely settled down since that first inning and really since those first couple of hitters in the first inning. Yeah. Of course, you know, Castelli teed off, allowed the walk to Tanaka, and then, J, uh, then J.C. Allen teed off. After that, even for the remainder of that inning, yeah, he still kind of struggled, but didn't allow an additional run to score since then. Yeah, he's been smooth since then. Bouchain comes up, walked the first inning, popped out to Jack Burke in the third. Hunter Drake says, thanks guys for the compliment. Let me paint the edge here. Bouchane had a pretty good day on Tuesday against your Chargers. 
Hunter Drake says, well, I'll work it on the edge. I'm just gonna work it a little further out on an edge. Winds blowing straight out here at Cypress College. Just off the plate, Johnson tries to frame it, doesn't get the call. Three and one. Bouchain. Very still at the plate. Ball four. So Barajas comes up. Grounded out into a double play in the first inning, walked in the third inning. So he's 0 for 1 today. Rodrigo batting 279 this season, 24 ribbies for the Bobcats. And as Albert pointed out last game, he's the son of who? Rod Barajas, former Dodger and current, uh, I believe, major league coach for the Marlins. So like many young people here in Southern California, some you may not know, have that lineage of baseball in their family. Runner at first, up by one. Snap throw to first, not in time. So Trent comes up throwing, gets it over to first. Brad Pickler and his softball team were up over Saddleback, two to nothing last time we heard. That pitch fouled away. One and two's the count. Throw to first. Runner goes. Can't get the runner, ball gets away. Runner heads for third, he's gonna be there standing up. Nice break by Jacob Bussain. When he gets the second, the ball goes in the dirt. It kicks, goes in the outfield, doesn't even look for the baseball. Runs the third and once again, Saddleback, the Bobcats have a runner in scoring position. So you give him a stolen base. You have an advance when the ball gets away. Ball's in the dirt. Nice block by Trent Johnson behind the plate. Kicks the ball up the third baseline so the runner isn't even a good break coming home. Johnson officially credited with an error on that play. Brahas goes down low. And when you look at the defense by the Chargers, De La Rosa a third straight away. Then you go to short. Chapman right off the bag at second. Then you swing over to second. See Jackal with a big hole there as they're playing. Brajas as a straight pull hitter. Knocked down again, ball four. So back 
to back walks after two quick outs in this inning. A little bit of trouble here for Hunter Drake. Of course, he had a little bit of trouble in the first, was able to work out of it. And we'll see if his defense can come through for him here. Just a nice little ground ball is really all he needs to get out of this inning and stay in this game and keep it one run. And hopefully his offense can pick him up. Bryson Hoyer comes up, grounded out his last time up to short. Nice play made there by Chapman to get him. Walked his first time up, so he's 0 for 1 today. Runners at the corner. Snap throw to third. Almost get it, so the runner fakes going at first. Johnson comes up and snaps at the third, didn't even look at first base. Nice defensive move by the young catcher for your Cypress Chargers. Almost hangs out the runner at third base. Hunter Drake's got to find something there. That's first strike. So Drake finds the zone again. We're here in the top of the fifth. It's Saddleback 3, Cypress 2 on Chargers Live and Sportsnet, USA.net. Chargers need every game they can get for the rest of their run. Runner goes. Johnson knocks the ball down. So you give Barajas a stolen base. Back-to-back -back stolen bases in this fifth inning. Bobcats now have 39 for the season. Inside. 39 successful steals, only caught stealing nine times. 36 coming into today's game. It's a nice percentage. Deep fly ball to right field, all the way back, it's gone. Oh yeah. Bryson Hoyer turns on it and yanks it out of the ballpark. And a close game now becomes six to two here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet USA net. Three home runs for the Bobcats in this game. And Albert Two of them that we've seen, normally not to a field we see any home runs in, and that's right field. And the ones that have been hit out there have been smoked. Absolutely. I mean, like typically speaking, it's usually any home run in this park. It's usually out to left or left center. Very rarely does it come into right field, and we've seen it twice already today. Huge bomb, of course, at the hands of Hoyer, and then, of course, uh, Castelli to start the game. So two quick outs here in the top of the fifth. Looked like Cypress was going to dodge the bullet. Bouchane walks, Barajas walks, and then Hoyer yanks it out of the park to increase the lead against your Cypress Chargers here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey Nalen said, hey, guys, you know what? There's Maybe the last two spots up for grabs are between Pasadena City College, and then Elko. Actually, if OCC and Cypress can make a run, they'd have a good chance. Corey's going out on a limb and saying there's going to be six teams, six teams from the OEC. 
I think that's a lot of love from Corey Nealon. Corey Nealon, Corey Nealon, uh, you know what? I'm not sure there's a lot of agreement about what you just said at the table here, but uh, we'll see. Here on Sportsnet USA.net and Chargers Live. Right now, though, Cypress has got to find a little magic trailing 6-2 to two to the Saddleback Bobcats here on Chargers Live and SportsNetUSA.net. Golden West, 11-5. Saddleback looking to go 10-7. So Anthony Hohola is now on the mound for your Chargers. Throws that one in the dirt. Tried to come with a breaking ball after the fastball to start it off to Tyler, but I think he just kind of overthrew that one a little bit. And with the state of things, when you're on your relief, in my opinion, just come out with the heater. Robert Pitts Jr. settles underneath that one and pulls it in, but not before three huge runs come in for Saddleback. Three runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. As we head to bottom of five, well, it's the Bobcats, six. The Chargers, too, here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey Nalen says, okay, if you guys aren't going to agree on six, a lot of love, Nalen. Gives OEC five teams making the playoffs. So Mr. Nalen says the OEC will make five. The voice of men and women's basketball here at Cypress College. Women's volleyball here at Cypress College. And, of course, Corey's been out there for men's and women's water polo with me here on sportsnetusa.net and chargers live and of course he has been a fixture for women's softball alongside ed ford and myself for years here on sportsnetusa.net and now sportsnetusa.net and chargers live we have been around for a while in the women's game so corey's going to give well, we might as well just say a lot of love to the OEC, and he's going to drop five teams in there. Now we just got to figure out how to get Brad Pickler to know that Corey's going to give the OEC for softball a lot of love because Brad thinks Corey keeps leaning towards another conference in women's softball here on SportsNetUSA.net. Top of the order here in the bottom of the fifth for the Chargers. It's going to be Burke, Robecki, and Shonsby. So Burke walked and has struck out in this game so far. Jack Burke needs to get something going. Tyler Burns bringing the heat. Just off the plate. Struck out the side. Last inning. Down and off. Jack looks at that one. Jack's got 23 walks this season. Reaches out for one. Easy fly ball to Tanaka for out number one. So Tanaka settles underneath an easy fly ball, and that brings up Robecki. 
No offensive rhythm for the Chargers yet. Started off good, and then everybody's taking a quick nap. Evan will see if he can start something right now. Good discipline. Good. Robecki, a golden hawk from El Dorado. Good eye again. Good eye. Two and one's the count. Barajas gets down low. Robecki on the fist to the back of the wall right there. Oh, he caught it on the thin part. If he catches it on the fat part, you kiss that one goodbye. And Robecki just barely got under that one, just missed it. And I'll tell you what, Mark, actually, if you know that left field fence didn't have the batting cage is right behind it. It wouldn't be as tall as it was. That one would have been gone. So again, close, but C plus. If Todd Glenn were grading that long fly ball. Of course, Todd never get an, gave an A to anybody. Shonesby gives it to his counterpart right at first base for out number three. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. As we head to the sixth, it's Saddleback Six. Cypress Two on Sportsnet, USA.net. Long Beach City College, oh, they're up over Mount Sac in softball. As Megan's got her team rolling this year. Oh, is that a final? Okay, Ed was trying to let me know quietly, but now I know it's a final. <laughs> so that's a final. Long Beach City beats Mount Sac. Corey Nalen. Megan's got him rolling in baseball. Bottom of the fifth, Golden West College. They're continuing their quest to win the OEC. They're up 7-2. to two. OCC is staying right there as Santa Ana has faltered. Now they're trailing 6-4. to four and Fullerton College over Riverside, nine to two in the bottom of the fifth. So two of the teams keep winning. Santa Ana is starting to lose. Actually, uh, correction, it's Riverside nine, Fullerton two. Fullerton College, oh, so Ed wrote it down wrong? Ed wrote it down wrong. Oh, okay. Has so, two, Riverside has nine. They're looking at that for me. I'm just, I'm just the Messenger, let me pass that back there. See, this is the thing, it's fun at sportsnetusa.net. There's Corey, I don't know. There's Mark, I never knew. There's Ed, I knew most of the time. And then there's Albert, huh? All here on sportsnetusa.net. It's more like, wait a minute. No, oh, there we go. That's not quite right. Corey, you could you could text in anything on that one, my friend. Hudson comes to the plate for Saddleback. Takes it on the belt buckle for a ball. Three runs in the top of the fifth. Saddleback. Hanging tough with the go-getters. Flared over the dugout down the right field line. Brad Pickler with his team trying to stay even with what's going on. Off. Ricochet. Ricochet. And so Hudson safe at first. That was an absolute scorcher by Hudson. Ricocheted off the glove of Ahola. Went right at the feet and glove of Jackal. He tried to do a little ole with it, and it just went right out into center field. Just a tough one altogether. 
So that's a big hit. Too hard to handle is what you say on that one. Nicola comes up, squares, offers early. Infield comes in, stays with the offer, takes it on the corner for a strike. Saddleback wanting to increase their lead. Cypress wanting to shut the door. Bunt back, turn, was going to go to second, stops, because you heard the infield yell, 2-2. Two, two. They thought they had a shot at the front runner, but he chooses to do differently and allows the sacrifice to work. And I really do think that was the best judgment there by Hohola. Yeah, he might have had the time, but considering his position just barely off the mound, he might not have had the time to actually make the accurate throw and give enough time to actually turn two. So he goes with, you know, the quote unquote easy out, the better out, which is recorded the out at first. Costelli comes up. He powered one over the right field wall. Then grounded back to second. Popped up to Burke in a short fly ball to right field. So he's one for three in this game today. So we get a Bach. Runner advances to third. Infield comes in now. Your Chargers need to chop it off. And it's a dinker that drops in. Base hit. Throw to the plate. Oh, it was a catch. Jack Burke lays out flat. I thought it was going to fall in there. And this, again, is why I love this kid in right field. I tell you what, this kid is so dynamic. If you're out there right now, you want to see a baseball player, come to Cypress College and watch this student athlete perform at the highest level that you can see a defensive player play. Jack is spectacular in right field. And I actually thought that ball was going to die and drop in. Jack fooled me and said, no, old guy, I can move. Maybe you can't, but I can on a great diving play by Jack Burke. I think that would go down officially as a sack fly for Costelli, give him an RBI since Hudson scored. Yes, sir. Well, really more of a sack line drive than anything else, considering how hard he hit it. Ohola well, bounces that one in. And again, this is just that season that you watch with the Chargers. Tanaka gets hit by the pitch. That pitch also gets a piece of the umpire too. Get him, caught him right on the hand. And you look at Tanaka who has 34 consecutive games with a hit. He should get up one more time. So he'll still have an opportunity to keep his streak going. Bounced three feet in front of the plate. Tanaka just glides in the second. So J.C. Allen watches it. Allen homered in the first, grounded out to De La Rosa in the second, popped out to Jackal in the fifth. And now there's a conversation on the mound.
So conversation happens. Apparently the umpire was a part of that conversation too. He wasn't there to bring it up. He was actually there to be a part of it. Yeah, I think he was saying, hey, thanks for asking me if I got hurt. I would have probably just kicked him just to make sure. <laughs> J.C. waits for the pitch. Runner at second. Swings at one off of shoelaces. Can't connect with that. Two down. One in. Seven to three. The Bobcats. Seven to two, the Bobcats. Well, I'm going to give Cypress an extra run just because. Down and away. Hola. Really not finding the plate well. Two and one. Two outs. Need to shut the door if you're Cyprus. Got to find a way to crawl back in here. Off the plate. Three and one. Again, too many walks. High fastball, and of course that's the one you put up there and Allen just says, oh, it's big as a beach ball, I'm gonna swing at it, swings right through it. Three and two, runner at second. Doesn't have to go, but let's see if they get daring. And the Bobcats send a runner. Popped up. Over by Cyprus. Johnson pulls it in for out number three. So one run, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to the bottom of the sixth, it's now seven to two here on Sportsnet, USA.net, and Chargers Live. Albert, Ed, the old guy. What are we, uh, have we decided not to send me any more scores now because nobody wants to, you know, here's the challenge. It's just like a chess match. Once you make a mistake, nobody well, well, you and Ed get gave, the dinger. You and Ed gave some extra runs uh, to Fullerton. Jack, you gave extra, an extra run to Cypress just now. You, you were giving them extra runs to Cypress uh, when they played the Pirates last week. <laughs> Just giving up all kinds of runs there, Mark. So Rob Johnson, see, things that you don't know. Rob Johnson holds the hitting streak for the Bobcats. Even Saddleback didn't know this last week because it was asked up above. We did ask. The guy was Before unsure. Before that, yeah. Rob Johnson had 26 consecutive games. Tanaka now will own that at 34. So, thank you, sir, because, you know, Saddleback was wondering what the hitting streak might be. They, you know, they were a little in the booth going, we're not quite sure. So, we know that. Middle of the order for Cypress here, De La Rosa, Matlock, and Pitts. Coming up. De La Rosa, 0 for 2 today. Flew out to right, flew out to center. De La Rosa to his counterpart. Over to third, they get him quickly as Allen just snuggles up, makes the play for out number one. See, and I like that Albert Robles says, I'm a giver, not a taker. I give help to baseball teams. Hey, 
Matlock comes up. So the bats have gone quiet for Cyprus in this game. They're saying, Mr. Pavlovich, we'll take your help. Outfield deep for the Bobcats. And you know, Mark, uh, another story here for Cyprus is, you know, the walks have killed him because both the Bobcats and the Charters have the same amount of hits, five apiece, but it's, it's those walks that have scored on those hits for the Bobcats that have really done Cyprus in so far. Off the fist, easily taken there by Hudson for out number two. Yeah, and besides the walks and everything else, not no timely hits for Cyprus. And it's like any game that you play with a bat and ball, you've got to have good pitching. If it's softball, it's from the circle. If it's baseball, it's from the mound. Pitts gets hit with the first pitch. So he'll move on. Got to have good defense. And then you have to have timely hitting. And Saddleback has had timely hitting today. They had it on Tuesday too. So that's why they are where they are in the standings right now. Pitts taking his time, walking to first, took that one way inside. A little bit off the wrist of his left hand. This Cypress team has a really nice group of young men that love the game of baseball. They play for a very deserving coach who knows what he's doing, uh, who has a lot of uh, fantastic assistant coaches with him. They're all good educators. And if you ever have any time, you need to stop by here. Check out the athletic facilities, the school, the people that work here, the students who come here to find that dream. So take some time to go to your local community college. We endorse it here on sportsnetusa.net. Pitts gets back. Six to two, looking for that big hit. Not down by much. Need to crawl back into this game. Lazy fly ball into no man's land and caught over the shoulder. Ben Castilli goes out there and gets it and makes that beautiful basket catch over his shoulder for out number three. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to seven, it's the Bobcats, seven. Cyprus 2 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. See? See? Do you like that? Albert Robles. What's not to like? Uh, th exactly. That's what they all say here on Sportsnet, USA.net, and Chargers Live. Well, Corey Nalen's got five going in. Ed Ford, myself, we've got four going in. If you flip over to the softball side, a little different, uh, you know. First two get in. Then after that, we start looking at RPI for the uh, playoffs. So that's the difference between the two sports in the sense of how you make the playoffs. Three for baseball, two for softball. as it goes up and down. And of course, in baseball, it's 24-24. In softball, it's 24 in the south, 18 in the north. So a uh, little difference and a change up on, on what they give. And of course, they keep increasing it every year. It's like giving away those free degrees. Might as well just add a couple more students, give them their degrees. And they can say, I went to college. And you say, where are you working at? they want to make money it's probably at a local fast food restaurant because nobody else is going to pay you that's 
Bouchain, Barajas, Hoyer to start the seventh. 72, the Bobcats. Anthony can't allow anything else to get across the plate. They gotta make up five before this game ends. Wind's trying to blow to the Robles Vortex, trying to get there to left center. Bouchane swings through that one. Pops back in our direction. Sean's be at first. Jackal at second. Chapman at short. De La Rosa at third. Robecki in left. Pitts in center. Burke in right. As easily Bouchain goes down here in the seventh. Johnson behind the plate. That's the defensive setup for your Cypress Chargers here in the seventh inning. In the bottom of the sixth, seven to two over Irvine Valley, Orange Coast, eight, Santa Ana four, top of the eighth. In the top of the seventh, Riverside City College, nine, Fullerton College, three. Robert Pitts Jr. comes traveling in, says, yeah, well, uh, I think I'll park my car here and make the catch on a lazy fly ball to center field. And I can't confirm those numbers are correct. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. I, 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 was, I was looking at the live scoreboard as you were reading it off, just making okay. sure. Okay, okay. See, point and counterpoint. We make it here. Hoyer comes up. Playing right field. Bryson. Looked like they were Cypress was going to get out of it. Tanaka grounds out. Allen pops to second. Back to back walks and then Hoyer drives one to right field. And all of a sudden, the lead just escalated for the Bobcats. It was inflationable. Robert Pitts backs up, settles underneath it for out number three. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Well, it's time for the Chargers to wake up because it's the Bobcat 7, the Chargers 2, here on Sportsnet, USA.net, and Chargers Live. Ed, Albert, the old guy, and Corey Nalen watching at home here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet, USA.net. We look at it, it'll be Johnson, Chapman, and then we go back to the top of the order here in the seventh to Jack Burke. So somebody's got to find a little magic for your Cypress Chargers here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet, USA.net. So we've got a pinch hitter, Luca Arenado coming up. Arenado coming up. So Arenado, who played on Tuesday, went 0 for 3 against Saddleback. 
He got up four times. He walked, then he grounded out the first. Hit into a double play and then grounded out the third. Can to change that right now. So Arenado's up. Swings through that fastball. And Tyler Burns has looked pretty darn good, Albert, since he's been out there. Very sharp in relief. That's down in the dirt. Doubles it up with a couple balls. Two and one. Cyprus needs runners. They got to get human beings on the bags. Yeah, four burns across four innings of work so far. It's recorded five strikeouts. Popped up. Hudson takes control and calls it and brings it in. So Hudson being the captain out there. Gets out number one. Burns looking good. Nate Norman now comes up. So Norman comes to the plate. We'll see if he stays in the game defensively. My guess it might be some sort of a double switch, so to speak. Eight strikes out, because Trent Johnson got pinched hit four, and now Norman comes in for Chapman. Strike three called. So Norman never gets the bat off his shoulder. We go back to the top of the order. Looking at the replay of that called strike three, I think uh, Norman might have gotten a little bit of squeeze there. And most likely a really excellent frame job on the half of Barajas behind the plate because it was really low outside the corner. Came up here, framed it in, called strike three. Little juice by the catcher. That down in the dirt. And of course will be strikeout number six for Tyler Burns here in relief. Popped in foul territory. Made the catch over there, J.C. Allen. Backs up, brings it in for out number three. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody. Not a soul left on base for Cyprus here on Sportsnet, USA.net, and Chargers Live. We head to the eighth. Well, it's been all saddlebacks. Three in the first, three in the fifth, one in the sixth, and they've got a seven to two lead over your Cypress Cyp Chargers here on Charger Live and Sportsnet USA. .net. Chargers have to find something. Saddlebacks feeling good. They look like they're going to make the playoffs and they're going to be in the right place when they do. So with the pinch hits that we had in the bottom of the seventh, we got some defensive replacements here in the top of the eighth. So Evan Robecki will move to second base. Uh, Lakata will come in to uh, play shortstop. Jackal will switch over to third. 
Arenado, who came in to pinch it for Chap uh, for Johnson. He'll move into left field, and Norman will take over behind the plate catching. So it looks to me, Mark, that that hit by pitch by Pitts seems, not by Pitts, um, by De La Rosa, seems to have been affecting him a little bit. He's coming out of the game. Actually, no, excuse me. Uh, uh, De La Rosa's over at short now. That's De La Rosa yeah, apologies, at short. Apologies, uh, like, because I was looking at uh, the live stats, because like those actually show the replacements, and I was So De La Rosa's at correct. short. Yeah, De La Rosa is at short. I thought it was Lakata for a moment. And then Lakata's at third? Lakata's not in at all. Oh, okay. He's not, no. That, that, okay. That, that's where I was mistaken. Oh, okay. Taking for a strike. Zach Anderson is now, is that Anderson behind the play? No, Norman is catching. Norman's catching, okay. Yeah. So Norman's catching. Come on, Josh, come on. Check this, come on. Come on, Josh, come on. Check this, come on. Come on, Josh, come on. Check this, come on. So Jackal makes the play, gets him over at first. So Nathan over at third now. Gets Tyler. 5-3. Straight up the middle, Robecki behind, buckles, goes down, can't get the runner. So Hudson gets a base hit. Going up the middle, it wasn't gonna get made on a play anyway, even though the feet buckle right behind second base, it would have been a tough play to make. So we've got a runner at first with one out. Here in the eighth. Down in the dirt. What well, was a close game on Tuesday between these two teams? Ended up five to four. A little different in this game today. Seven to two. Looked in the first inning like Albert and I were going to see a lot of balls flying out of here, but Albert, that hasn't really happened. It also looked like in the first inning that it would have been a fairly tight game too because up until the fifth, no one had scored anything besides that uh, first inning. Yeah, yeah. Very topsy-turvy game scoring-wise. Squirmed foul. Runner advances to second. So Hudson advanced on a ball into the dirt. So he's over at second, off the plate. Quiet crowd out here. Off the plate. Must be that quiet anticipation of what's going to happen next. Nick Luck. 
Three and one count. Andrew waiting on the pitch. Skies it high. Albert goes back, pulls it in. On the pop fly. Two down. Big wild pitch goes over the glove of Norman. And so Hudson will advance from second to third. Stelly. Home run in the first. Grounded out to second in the second. Pop to left in the fourth. Sacrificed in the sixth. On deck is that record if we'll see what's happened. Runner goes. Hitter gets plunked. And that brings Tanaka to the plate. His last chance, unless a miracle happens and we go into extra innings. First was their last game against Santa Ana. Tanaka had gone hitless up until the ninth inning where he finally got that precious base hit to extend his streak. He'll sitting, be looking to extend that here today in the eighth. Yeah, sitting at 34, Albert's age. I Am I close? I have a few years past that. Oh. Oh. I thought I was the only old man sitting at the table. Yep. Getting a pitching change here for the Cypress Chargers. So that's going to be... It's number 21, Andrew Frosto. Oh. Yeah, I guess it, that's it. Frosto out of Covina High School. <laughs> Frosto with an ERA of eight. Point seven one pitch ten innings this year. Of course, we, we've talked about the pitching. Cypress does have one thing going for him. Pavlovsky still leads the OEC with strikeouts with 76. Blakely of Saddleback is sitting there at number two, uh, number three with 58 strikeouts this season. Allegro, like we said, was number one in saves. coming into this game. He started this game. Albert sort of likes what Saddleback did. Comes out with a reliever, brings in a starter, and it has seemed to have worked for them so far today. Going with the moves implemented and created by the Tampa Bay Rays a few years ago. People mocked it, and then they started winning games. It's an interesting strategy. Yeah, it is. 
Big swing for a miss by Tanaka. One and one. Hitting streak on the line. One and two. So it looks like it could end today. Down the line, it's a, a base hit. Ball. Tanaka is going to end up getting a double, driving in a couple, and it goes to 35 games in a row for Tanaka. Tanaka getting it done on what could have been his last pitch opportunity. is definitely his last strike. Nice little inside out swing. Pulls it right along the bases and clears the bases for a two RBI double. Saddleback leads nine to two. So Tanaka keeps the drum beating. Says, no, I'm not done yet. Played in 35, hit in 35. The young man's pretty remarkable. And of course, the beat goes on as now Saddleback has nine runs in this game. Nine runs, seven hits. For the Bobcats. Special moment for a Saddleback out here. Because you could hear the guys all standing there wondering if he was going to get that hit. Allen goes to first, getting walked. So. Nine to two here in the eighth. Who Shane comes up, takes it off the plate. Jacob. Got out in the first after walking on a four to six to three double play, then popped to right. Takes that one up the middle. Here comes the throw to the plate, goes down, and a run scores. So Tanaka shows his speed and gets in on a hit by Bouchane. Ten to two, Saddleback. Here in Chargers Live and Sportsnet USA dot net. Big swing and a miss by Barajas. Flew out to center his last time up. Walked, stole a base, scored in the fifth. Walked in the third and hit into a double play in the first. Off the plate. Give it to Saddleback, a lot of scoring with two outs in this game. Barajas continues things. Throw to the plate. Jack Burke puts it on the money and holds the runners. So a nice throw by Jack to keep everybody from getting in.
bases are loaded. And Saddleback has gone through the order here in the eighth. It's a buffet. De La Rosa grabs it at short and makes the play, but not before three more runs come in. Three runs on four hits, no errors, and a couple left on base. As we head to the bottom of the eighth, it's Saddleback 10, Cypress 2, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. So as I look at some of the things going on here, stolen bases, Wessel out of Orange Coast College leads the conference with six. We talked about Allegro having the lead in saves. Home run, Schmidt from Fullerton starting today with Samoya right behind him with 11. Allen from Saddleback was alive with 11 coming into the game. Burke with 11. Strikeouts, Pavlovsky from Cyprus, Ramos from Golden West, sitting there at one and two. Runs batted in, Schmidt with 57. Allen from Saddleback with 54. Sconsby with 42, starting the game. Then Beeson from Fullerton with 41. Samora with Golden West with 40 wins. Ramos from Golden West with seven. Home run, Schmidt, we've talked about that. De La Rosa batting 403. Robecki right behind him. One and two. Tanaka 393. Sconsby 363. That's all there. Earned run average. Jenkins from Riverside at 144 leads it right there. So some of the leaders in the OEC. Evan Robecki will start things off here in the eighth. Here in the bottom of the eighth. Trailing by eight. Evan looking for a little magic. Down low, nice eye. Evans played in all 34 games this year. He scored 42 runs. Walks on that one, so that starts things off here in the eighth inning. If you're a believer, now is when you think Chargers are gonna make their move. for effective as Tyler Burns has been today. He is indeed human. He did allow a few runs in his last appearance, so anything is possible. So we'll see if he can continue dealing the magic or maybe somebody sees that the sleight of hand, I saw that extra quarter. We'll see what he can do against Cyprus. Down low, one and one's the count. Gotta get runners on bases. It's like getting students in seats to continue a program. Got to do that with baseball to continue the runs. You got to get runners on bases. Shot to second. Flip. Four to six to three. Double play. So just when you think something good may happen, you hit the ball on the nose. And standing at second base, Ben Castilli says, no, not past me today, and turns a routine double play. Albert, this just seems to be the way of the season for the Cypress Chargers. 
You know, they just haven't had those well-placed, timely hits that they occasionally get. And they played well against Saddleback on Tuesday on the road, but today it's just not fallen. Yeah. Fly ball to left field. Easy catch out there for Jacob Bouchain for out number three. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base as we head to nine. It's Saddleback, 10, Chargers 2, here on Sportsnet, USA.net, and Chargers Live. Well, it's been an interesting season. If you're a Chargers fan, you can look at it and say, tough season. Very talented group of young men, student athletes that come out here. Let us never forget that these are student athletes. You know, they're young men that come out to pursue a sport, go to class, maintain their grades, help at home, take care of friends, family. It's something that everybody seems to forget when they're out there watching collegiate athletics in today's game, especially at this level. There's no NIL deals here on the community college level. So a lot of these young men may actually work part-time for all we know. So that's the thing you're looking at. So don't ever forget that. Jason Thompson now on the mound for Cypress. So new pitcher Thompson comes in here in the ninth. Jason Thompson getting an opportunity. He's pitched sparingly. Has pitched 4.1 innings. So we'll see what he can do. Why he's out here in the ninth. Also a defensive replacement out in center field, Jacob Elliott taking over for Robert Pitts Jr. So Golden West College holding on to their lead in the top of the eighth over Irvine Valley. OCC nine, Santa Ana four in the ninth and Riverside. Nine, Fullerton three, bottom of the eighth here on Sportsnet, USA.net. So Jason Thomas, lefty out there. Outside. Nice work, guys. Watch me, come on. Great work, come on. Way back, come on. Find a way. So Tyler walks to start things off. Here in the ninth. Tyler's 0 for 4 today. Hudson comes up. Got a hit in the second. Walked in the fourth. Hit in the sixth. And a hit in the eighth. Battered around last inning, so get a little repetition going on here. Rope learning. Give me about another 250 games in a row and I'll, I'll be okay.
Hudson takes a strike. Give the gentleman, gentleman to my left another 250 years. I'm making you old now. I'm going to let you live for a while. <laughs> Hudson takes that on the corner for strike three. Boy, nice pitch right on the edge for strike three. Jason Thompson throwing hard out of Gar High School. Of course, we talked softball earlier, and uh, Corey Nealon said, hey, you know what? It's going to be four OEC teams. Of course, I had my friend Corey Neal and said, did you say that Tanaka's got a 34-game hitting streak? No, now it's 35. So he has gotten a base hit in every game he has played, Mr. Neal. And so anybody that hasn't heard that today, Albert, I, just, I, I tell you what, I'm taken back by that. I just think that's pretty it's, incredible. It's no words can express just how amazing that is to achieve such a streak at this level. Yeah, and I mean, you, you can imagine as it keeps going on that you gotta keep thinking it's gonna stop. Yeah. Strike three. So we talked about this young man, Jason Thomas, and he says, yeah, I can pitch. And that was just a beautiful curveball, just straight down the middle, just jelly legs, Nikoluk. Uh, Castelli comes up. Got hit by a pitch his last time up. High fastball. So yeah, Tanaka is a special young man as a hitter for this Saddleback team. And that hitting streak is specifically this season when we were there on Tuesday. Spoke uh, with the PA. He Made sure went back to last season just to see if there were any games. And of course, like in their last game of the season, went hitless. So that hitting streak is from game one of this very season for Saddleback. So an impressive streak all the way around. <laughs> Curveball for oh. a strike. Beautiful curve. Castelli's knees buckled. Looked like an old man climbing down from a ladder. Gets Thomas to the ground floor. Slinging it. Down in the dirt. Nate Norman makes the block. Keeps it out in front of him so nobody can advance. And Tyler took a nice aggressive secondary lead, but the ball didn't skip away enough for him to take off. Not that he needed to. Breaking ball right at the letters. Three and two's the count. And if you're Costelli, you're, you're saying to Thomas, I dare you to throw that one again. Hives. Just, Costelli just said, I gotta go after it. It's too pretty, it's too fast, it's too nice. Throw it up around the eyes, somebody will always swing at it. If they can see it, they'll swing at it. Breaking ball, fouled away. Fouled 
foul. Just a little bit of it. If he doesn't get that, you got to look at this young man from Cyprus and say, you know, Jason Thomas, come on in. Strike out the side. Let everybody ask, where you been? Big curveball down the middle, called strike three. Just freezes Costelli at the plate. And like I said, the big question is, where you been? Just looking at the replay, got to check this out. Big time delivery, slow chopping curve. Almost looked to hit the bottom of the plate, but still a decent frame job by Nate Norman. It was still right down the middle. Costelli just froze. So no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We get a new pitcher for Saddleback to end things up. It's Isaac Rodriguez on the mound for the Bobcats here in the ninth. And just a little more quick love for Jason Thomas there. You know, he allows the leadoff walk to Jason Tyler, who gets the second base on a pass ball. But Thomas proceeds to answer that walk with striking out the side, all of them looking. Yeah, so impressive for a gentleman who only had pitched 4.1 innings in the entire year. So Derek Gonzalez will be coming up here in the ninth. Looks like Gonzalez will bat for Matlock. Isaac Rodriguez will be pitching for Saddleback here in the ninth. And then Jacob Elliott is on deck. So it'll be Gonzalez and Elliott to lead things off here in the ninth inning. Gonzalez batting 256 this season. Looks at a ball. 23 RBIs. He's appeared in 33 games for your Cypress Chargers. Looks at a couple balls to start things off here in the ninth. Ten to two. There's three. Isaac Rodriguez searching for a strike zone. Finds it on that one. Three and one's the count. So Cyprus is still alive as they start things off with a walk. Jacob Elliott comes up out of Lakewood High School. Elliott betting 182. Only 11 at bats so far this season. So really hasn't found a rhythm. Ethan Bagani is on deck. Come on. 
Elliott swings a win down by his knees. 0-2. Oh that went in the dirt. So Rodriguez trying to get things going. Like to get out of here giving up nothing. Runner over at first base. Throws over there. Hudson tries to make the tag. Rodriguez. Down in the dirt. Bounces it. Runner takes off. Makes it to second. On a pitch thrown about uh, a few feet short. Did I wake you? No? Okay, good. All right. Didn't want to startle you. Strike three. Ethan Bagani comes up. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to wake up, and look in the mirror, and think, "Oh my God, I've got to be Mark's age overnight." <laughs> How long have I been sleeping? Ethan takes that one for a ball. Quick final score from Santa Ana. Orange Coast nine, Santa Ana four. So the Pirates take Ethan. one away. On the handle, quick pickup, throw to first. Route number two, nice play there at short by Andrew Nickluck. So Cypress down to their last out. Runner at third. So Gonzalez conceded the bag. Big swing by Wyland. We've seen Brandon play this season. Played a lot of shortstop for Cypress. Brandon Weiland, freshman, betting 355. Down in the dirt. Out of Esperanza High School. The home of Chuck Lasik. That's where Chuck went to high school. That's where, that's where the laser went? The yeah, Esperanza. The yeah. laser. Lasik. The laser. Just off the edge. So two on for your Chargers. 
making a comeback. Nick Norman comes up. Nate out of Fullerton High School. Batting 303 this season. Seen Nate played a lot of catcher this year. Excellent guy behind the plate. Bounced into home plate for a ball. Rodriguez wanting to close things out. Tyler Burns looked great when he was on the mound for a saddleback. Tanaka continues his hitting streak. Some milestones today for Saddleback. Another final score here in the OEC. Riverside 10, Fullerton 4 final. Base is loaded. So Jack Burke gets an opportunity. Two outs. Base is loaded. If you're Cypress, you believe in miracles, well, you know Jack's going to hit one, and then it's a brand new ball game. So Santa Ana loses. They're now 9-8. and eight. Fullerton loses. They're now 9-8. and eight. Riverside won. They're nine and eight. And that's just gonna make those three games against Cyprus all the more meaningful. And Golden West won, right? Uh, not yet, but they're leading Irvine Valley eight to two in the bottom of the eighth. Okay. If they do win, they would be 12 and five. So it is a jumble. Well, I guess you would say that the OEC is jambalaya. Hot jambalaya. Hot jambalaya. There we go. Albert Robles. Hot jambalaya for OEC. That sounds pretty good. Just a lot of spicy baseball goodness. There we go. And we do have an arm up in the bullpen for Saddleback. Jack just wants a big sit to keep things going. Takes a strike. One and two. Jack doesn't really agree with that one. Says, hey, I think that was a little off the plate here. No, you're being generous. I know you need to get home, but come on, man. Up in the bullpen, it's number 26 for the Bobcats. Jack takes it up the middle. Does it have seen eyes? It does. One run in, two runs in. So Jack gets a couple ribbies on a base hit. Ten to four here in Chargers Live and SportsNetUSA.net. Robecki comes up. Bases loaded. Look who's up. Dexter is up. 
Evan. One of the top hitters on this team. Takes a ball. If you're a believer in Cyprus, you can believe that anything could happen right now. Two on, two out, two in. Off the plate. Four runs, six hits. One error for Cyprus. Ten runs, nine hits for Saddleback. Takes a courtesy strike. Ball four. Well, Robert Robles is predicting a uh, don't eight put, run. Don't, don't eight, put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Eight run, eight run, ninth. As we get timeout, conversation in the mound. And a pitching change. It's going to be number 26, Camden Cisneros. Bases loaded. I saw you writing in the book, the book of Albert. You know? I write a lot of things. Yeah. Most, mostly in my scorebook. Yeah, but see, words of wisdom in the book of Albert. Mm. I'll tell you later. So we've got timeout on the field. It's Saddleback 10. Cypress 4 here in Chargers Live, sportsnetusa.net. Ed Albert, the old guy, hanging onto the table, waiting to see what happens. We've already seen the young man who's late. It went out in the first inning. If he could do it now. And bring it within two. I can't help but chuckle because that's I, community I, I, college I don't baseball. Know, I don't know what we'd do <laughs> if anything like that were to happen. That's community college baseball here on Chargers Live and SportsNetUSA.net. Cisneros comes in out of Tesora High School. Five appearance for us, five appearances for Cisneros this season. Not a whole lot of action, only eight innings of work recorded. Allowed eight hits, five runs, three of them earned. Two walks, four strikeouts. And has given up three home runs <laughs> for an ERA of 338. Uh, I love the words of just setting me up, just letting me know <laughs> that it's uh, it's a possibility. When uh, almost l just under half of the hits you have given up have been long balls, you never know. That's true. That's the game of baseball. Nobody knows. Because, you know, half the time, could go out half the time. Could find someone's glove. So Shonsby comes up. Home run in the first. Struck out in the third. Grounded back to first in the fifth. Hit into a double play in the eighth. Takes a strike. Come on, Randy, come on. 
Base hit gets a couple. Checks. Nope. They say he didn't go. One and one's a count. Hit it where they ain't. See what happens. Swings up one that breaks on him at the last second. One and two. Kind of been a nice little sinker. Fouls it off. Nice work, the guy. Saddleback wants to hold on because the ship is sort of leveling out here in the OEC. Those who have and those who have not. One, two. Hit inside the third base bag. Here comes one. Here comes two. And they move a little closer. Ten to six. You gotta love baseball, Mark. Yeah. It's like, you know, like when they say anything can happen, you gotta play all nine innings, all 27 outs. They mean exactly that. That old adage, it ain't over until it's over? It ain't over until it's over. Six runs, seven hits, one air, four Cypress. They're down by four. Two on, two out. Bottom of the ninth. Down in the dirt. Derek Gonzalez on deck. Big swing and a miss. And you just want to say to De La Rosa, just be patient. Two and one. Three and one. If he walks, the tying run comes to the plate. Three one pitch. See if De La Rosa has the green light. He does. Over to third, quick throw to second, and that's gonna get him out. Hard hit ball but right at J.C. Allen. So for Cypress here in the ninth, four runs on a couple hits, no errors, and two left on base. Well, Saddleback comes away with a big victory over Cypress today. Ten runs, nine hits, no errors for Saddleback. Six runs, seven hits, one error for Cypress. Saddleback stays in the hunt. Cypress drifts a little bit deeper into the dark blue. For Ed, Albert, and the old guy,